Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And on the bench today, we have a Zoe Zotec ZTRX1, a battery test multimeter, which was kindly sent in by our friends at Zoe Zotec Tools. So thank you very much for that. I will, um, I will put it through its paces and see what it's all about. But before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Patreon, join Facebook, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net, and let's get started. So let's have a look what's in the box. So USB-C, meter in this pouch, and a couple of bags of test leads, and what looks like a thermocouple. So we have the normal test leads, we have the battery test leads, we have the temperature thermocouple probe and we have the test meter itself with its big rubber bung over the battery test terminals. So not Zoe's normal colours, normally they're red and black and we've got an all black unit. This time we have a USB-C for charging and firmware upgrade on the back. So let's have a look at the the probes the normal um, test meter probes nothing special there just normal everyday probes and this is the battery test probe with its four wires and its big clamps and its big plug that goes into the front and of course we have the temperature test as well so all seems very good so having a quick look through the user manual it's all very comprehensive as you would expect from um zoe so let's turn it on and have a look so press and hold the power button we get greeted with the dc volts uh, screen everything looks sharp as you would expect quick look through the menu nothing overly overly exciting in the menu system power off timer backlight beep volume language okay nothing nothing too special there so 25,000 counts this will do it will do true rms and i'm going to look at dc voltage we'll go all the way to a thousand volts ac volts to 750 volts resistance we have capacitance and we have frequency, obviously temperature, continuity. And the battery internal resistance and the maximum voltage is 100 volts for the battery. So going back into the manual, we have a page that gives the, the readings for the different types of battery and what type of resistances you will see or you should expect to see now this is only a guide it's not it's not set in stone but it's a good guide so today we're going to be testing some lithium iron 18650s and we've got some zinc carbons we're going to have a look at as well so this will test lead acid lithium iron nickel metal hydrides nicar alkaline zinc carbon lithium polymer and a super capacitor very nice so nice clear screen it's automatically got a um, a graph that tracks the reading now here on the microchips channel we've spared no expense to get a little bit of a reference for us to test now you know i'm always about budget and doing things without stupid expense and this was a whole two pounds fifty so let's see how it does So the first resistor, 10 ohm, yep, good enough. Let's move down to the second resistor. This should be 100 ohms, yep, 100 ohms, no problem. This should be a 1K, yep, 1K, no problem. And we've got a 10K. And we've got last 800K. So that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. I know it's not a 100% calibrated reference, blah, 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 and all that, but it's good enough. So let's have a closer look at that screen. So we have, there's the 10 ohm range. There's 100 ohm. 
we'll move to 1k so 1k yeah these aren't too bad to be honest 10k and 100k I actually thought this would be a lot I thought these resistors would be a lot more um, out should we say but they, they're pretty close continuity nice responsive bleep no silly delay on it so that's fine just what you want for continuity so diode test so we're just testing a random diode on a board yeah test the diode no problem and it's got something across it so it reads the other way but there's the forward so that's fine diode test works let's have a look at capacitance so this should be picofarads and trying to read picofarads is very subjected to the leads and yeah so we'll move up to nanofarads yep one nan this should be 10 nan yeah and then we've got 100 nan that's fine and then we've got a one microfarad it's close and a 10 microfarad again we're just leaving this one to auto range there we go 10 microfarad so these references aren't aren't too bad obviously they're not you know what bang on 100 percent unless you um spend a lot of money on a calibrated re resistor reference and capacitors are very subject to the surroundings but for me that reads perfectly not a problem so i'm just trying to get the meter leads onto my bench supply and we're about 13 13 and a half volts yep no problem it's reading voltage there but you would expect it to being a, a multimeter we we'll press hold and it holds the display we'll press hold again and it will release it back to normal lovely let's try the frequency reading so the frequency reading is part of the ac test so we're on 50 kilohertz there that read 50 just zoom into the display we've changed it to 90 kilohertz there we go so there's not much voltage coming out of my um, function generator but it's showing the frequency no problem that's good enough temperature probe yep it's a temperature probe reads temperature i'm not going to go any further with that one now one thing i do like about this meter is this really nice satisfying yeah that's nice I like that no screw in just push and it holds it in place beautiful now i've got some random batteries that should be not fully working should we say so let's have a look at some dead batteries to start off with so we've got this nine volt battery now i know this battery was below specification there we go 7.8 volts yeah we know that that's bad no problem so i'm just having a look for the reading for that so it's a it's not a lead acid it's not an icad so zinc carbon two to six hundred and it's well low so and i think the display tells us that it's bad anyway so let's have a look at this alkaline battery this um Duracell that never leaks 1.2 volts yeah that's bad we know that's bad so let's have a look at these lithium-ion batteries now i had these on charge last night so they should all be good so let's measure them and see what internal resistances we're getting from them so we're on the mid setting here with us fast and slow settings for the reading 
have found that the mid is the best balance. So I think the book says 20 to 90, was it? Just open the book and have a look. Lithium iron, 20 to 90 mega ohm for an 18650. Now these aren't LiPo or LiPo batteries, so it's fine. So I'll put the probes back on again, just let it settle. Yeah, bang in the middle of 20 to 90 mega ohm. So even though these batteries are old and probably aging, they're still reading okay and they still hold charge and they still charge fine. And you can see the date on them, 2018. That's when I bought them. So they are a few year old, but they were um, good quality batteries anyway. But none of these cheap, nasty things. Now one of the, one of these batteries had trouble charging. It didn't finish its charge cycle. And I'm wondering if it was this battery. Because this battery just does not want to read properly. So maybe this is telling us that this battery is you know not good even though it is holding a charge maybe this is showing that it's starting to um, fail inside and it's probably the same age as the other batteries anyway so it's to be expected but this one's reading all over the place it just will it will not settle so maybe that's how a bad battery We'll have a look at the fourth battery. Yeah, as to expected in between 20 and 90. Meter bleeps, done. It's happy with its readings. So there's the slow, mid and fast settings. On the slow, obviously it's slower in reading, but you may get a more accurate reading on slow. There it is. So yeah, very nice. And then we can move it up to fast. So a quick test on fast. Absolutely not as accurate on fast. I'm sure there would be a battery type that would benefit from being on fast. But all in all, a very interesting meter with its um, capabilities of being able to test internal resistances of batteries, plus all the other basic functions you would expect from a multimeter, voltage, AC, DC resistance, diode capacitance, continuity, uh, basically a good all-round meter and definitely a um, good addition to your toolbox if measuring batteries is part of your daily routine or part of your you know daily repair anyway thanks all you for sending this in much appreciated don't forget to like share subscribe comment join facebook join patreon buy me coffee have a look at my website microchips.net thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode